In this video, we are presenting our Bridges paper, weaving paper into star patterns. The easiest way of weaving paper is cutting two sheets of paper into parallel strips. Use one sheet as warp and the other as weft in perpendicular direction. Weft strips are woven alternatingly above and below the warp strips. With two different colors for warp and weft, this creates a checkerboard pattern. At all crossing points of the paper boundaries, the checkerboard has an even valence. At each of these crossing points, the paper strips change from the lower to the upper level in cyclic order. The positive and negative cyclic order alternate around each phase. So every phase has an even number of crossing points and therefore also an even number of neighboring phases. To create a paper weaving, we need a cutting pattern. At each edge, one sheet has to be cut to let the other sheet pass through from the lower to the upper level. This partitions the edges of the pattern into two sets one for each sheet. In our graphics, we usually draw one set by solid lines, the other by dashed lines. Around each face, dashed and solid lines alternate. Now, let us consider some examples of tilings with even valences only, since this is necessary for a two coloring of the pattern. The regular or platonic tilings with triangles and squares have valence six and four at all crossing points. The shown semi-regular or Archimedean tilings with regular triangles and hexagons and with regular triangles and squares and hexagons have valence 4 at all crossing points. Another set of tilings with even valences only are Gary tilings. A common construction works as follows. Choose a suitable tiling of the 2D plane. In the image a tiling made from octagons and squares is shown. At each edge, midpoint, construct two crossing lines with a given angle to the edge. In each face of the underlying tiling, extend these lines until they intersect with other lines. By construction, the tiling created by these new lines is always two colorable. Whereas the so-constructed gilly tilings always have even valences of crossing points, there may be faces with an odd number of neighbor faces, such as the dark faces in this image, which have three neighbor faces each. Here it is not possible to have alternating solid and dashed lines around these faces. We can fix these odd faces by inserting additional crossing points where we can switch between solid and dashed lines, so we get alternating dashed and solid lines around these faces. At the newly inserted crossing points, the dashed and solid lines do not cross but both lines end since the valence is only two. This is the method we use in our patterns for the small kite shaped faces with only three neighboring faces surrounding center faces of stars with more than five tips in the Girit patterns. A second method of fixing odd faces is as follows. We find pairs of odd faces sharing one crossing point, such as the two five-pointed stars in the image. Each of these stars has five gray neighboring faces. If we don't switch solid and dashed lines at the common crossing points for both stars, each of the stars is surrounded by two dashed and two solid segments. At the common point, the solid and dashed lines do not cross. This is the method we used in our patterns for five-pointed stars in the Gary patterns. Here we see a simple example for a ten-pointed star, as it appears in some Gary tilings. In the top left image, we see the lines partitioned into solid and dashed lines. The right two are the cutting patterns for the two sheets of paper and the bottom left image shows a woven paper star. Here we can see how the weaving for the star is done. One sheet is put on top of the other, and then the two sheets are rotated into opposite directions. As the sheets are rotated, the strips are woven up and down. The rotation stops when the line endpoints meet. Here we have an example for a more complicated Geary tiling, a very common pattern constructed from a tiling with regular decagons and pentagons and barrel hexagons. The center image shows our partition into solid and dashed lines. Since all the lines end in the decagon areas, the two cut sheets both are not simply connected, so it is not possible to weave the two sheets together without additional cuts. We cut one of the sheets into simply connected parts by additional cuts shown as dotted lines. These parts can then be woven into the other sheet, similar to the previously shown star example. 
The dotted cut lines are chosen all inside faces of one color, so in the end, the cuts are hidden at the back side of the weaving. All examples shown in this video are handmade using ruler and pen knife. The first example is based on the standard Geary pattern constructed from regular pentagons, decagons and barrel hexagons. The next example is constructed from octagons and pentagons. The third example is made from pentagons, aneagons, hendecagons and hexagons. The last one shows a pattern made from pentagons, octagons and dodecagons.